Hey guys, and welcome back to another Kivi tutorial. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create pop-up windows, which is actually very useful, uh, and it's super simple to do this as well. So I'm just going to start and kind of build a very basic interface, uh, like GUI, and then we're going to get to actually using those pop-ups, putting them on the screen, some of the different options, how you can add different widgets to it, and all that. So essentially, uh, I have all these things imported. We've talked about them before. Widget, object, property, label, import, float layout. So I also need to just import uh, pop-up. So what I'm going to do is kibi.uix.popup, and we'll import pop-up like that. Now, what I'll actually start by doing is just show you guys right away how to make the pop-up, and then I'll work into how we can actually display it onto the screen and like trigger that event and whatnot. So I'm going to create a function. I'm just going to call this show underscore um, pop-up like this. Okay, it doesn't need any parameters. And all we're going to do in here is we're going to create a pop-up window and show it. And that way, whenever we want to create a pop-up, all we have to do is just simply call this function, and it'll do that for us. So you could put this as a method, say, per inside your widget class or inside your my app. Um, I'm just going to leave it as a function. Obviously, feel free to do whatever you want. So to create a pop up, what we need to do is need to have some content for that pop up. So actually, that leads me to we need to create another class. So I'm going to create a class, I'm just going to call this P standing for pop up. And all I'm going to do is pass in here. Now I'm just going to come to my my .kv file, sorry, that's already empty. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to define a few widgets that I want to go inside of my uh, what do you call it? My pop up or what, whatnot. So what I'm actually going to do, sorry, is go back here. I'm getting sidetracked and I'm just going to make this inherit from float layout because what I want my pop up window to be is a float layout um, that contains a few different widgets. So this is this will be nice. You guys will see how this works. Essentially, we have a class P inherits from float layout and now we have P. And what we're going to do here is add a few widgets. And since this inherits from float layout, we can use the size pause and or what am I saying, size, pause, size, hint, and pause, hint that we've used before. So let's just start off with a label, and we'll just say the label has a uh, text, and the text will just say, like, you pressed the, the button, how about that? Okay, and then we'll do size underscore hint, and for size underscore hint, it can be honestly whatever you want, it doesn't really matter, I'm just gonna do 0 0.6, 0 0.2, and for pause underscore hint, this one will be a bit different, I want this to be at the top of the screen, so we'll do X uh, and we'll do 0 0.2 just so we get that centered. And then we'll do Y, uh, actually not Y, let's do top of one. So we go right up to the top. Now I'll copy this and I'm just gonna do the same or similar thing with a button. So we'll just change this to be button. And you guys can see how this works. So we'll do button. Instead of going for 0 0.6, let's go 0 0.8. Let's go X 0 0.1. Uh, and we'll change this to Y and 0 0.1. So now if we actually use P, it should have like a label up top and then a button slightly below it. Uh, and that's all we need. And obviously you guys know how to add things into like your classes and float layouts and whatnot. Okay, so we have our float layout here. Uh, we have widgets. So we'll do something in that in a second, but let's get into pop-up now. So essentially the content for our pop-up is going to be P, right? So what we need to do is I'm just going to say show is equal to, and we'll create a new instance of P. And that's just so that we can use this in what we're going to do in a second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say um, pop, uh, should we say, let's just say pop up uh, window. I don't want to name it the same thing as the class. That's why I'm, okay, so pop up window equals pop up. And then in here we have a few things we can use. So we can use first of all title. Now, obviously, the title is going to be what's at the top of your box. In this case, I'm just going to say uh, pop up window. OK, we have content. Now, the content, remember, is going to be equal to P because that's what we said here. So we'll say content is or not P. It's show because that's where we're storing P. And then what else do we have? Well, we have a we can there's a bunch of other parameters that we can use as well. Uh, but we're going to use a size hint and pause hint as well. So I believe actually it might just be size. I got to check. Nope, it's size size hint. OK. So size hint, and here I'm just going to type none, none, because I don't want this to dynamically resize. I want it to just be equal to the same size no matter what. So it's size hint equals, sorry, none, none. And then we're going to do um, size for a static size is going to be equal to 400, 400. Now you can change the position as well, but by default, it's going to come in the middle of the screen, which is probably what you want. Um, so if you want to read the docs and see how to do that, feel free. But essentially, this is um, what you usually will want to do. Now to actually show this window, you don't have to add it to a widget or anything like that. All you have to do is literally just do pop up window dot show, I want to say, or is it dot pop? Let's see, or dot open. That's what it is. Sorry, I have it open on my other screen because I always forget. Okay, so dot open. 
So once you've created this pop-up window, you have the content, you've set the sizes here. The reason we do this is just so that we override it with um, this like absolute size. So it doesn't try to dynamically resize. And then we just opening it up and it'll just go on top of whatever window we already have created, which is really nice and saves us a lot of time. Now we have uh, this pop-up window now, but how do we actually trigger this and get it to run? Well, what we need to do is create a widget inside of our widgets class, um, ideally a button. And when we press that button, we're going to trigger this function. So first of all, I'm just going to say, while we're already here in this widgets class, I'm just going to say define BTN. Okay. And BTN will do this. Uh, is just simply going to call pop up window. So we'll just do this uh, pop up window. Don't know why that's not showing for me. Anyways, this should work. Pop up window. Oh, show underscore pop up is what I called it. My bad. Show underscore pop up. Okay. So now we're just going to call this function whenever this method is called. So to call this method, well, first of all, we need to create something for widgets. So like we've done before, we'll just do widgets. And then in here, we can just simply create a button. And I'm not going to worry about really sizing this or anything. I'm just going to simply make a button and it'll just say text. And the text will just be equal to uh, press me. Okay. And then we'll say on underscore release. All we're going to do is we're going to do root dot btn. And remember, root is going to call this widget class, which is means it's, it's going to call this method. Okay, awesome. So let's run this and see if everything's working. Okay, so you see a button, we say press me. And when we press press me, it pops up a window that says pop up window, you press the button. And then there is obviously another button in here that says you press the button. Now, if you want to add more things to this, you could go ahead and do that. Uh, you know how to now that we've created this little class for it. Now to get out of this pop-up, you just click anywhere else on the screen. You can see it disappears. Uh, and this is really nice. And I don't know, I think this pop-up looks pretty clean and you can really, you can dynamically change the size and do a lot of things with it. And I think it's very useful. Um, so anyways, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in another one.